Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Business 5. Uh, we are now on uh, Chapter 5, Intellectual Property and Internet Law. Our learning objectives for the chapter, uh, what is intellectual property? Really easy to uh, surmise and uh, sum up. Uh, why does this law protect trademarks and patents? We'll talk about both of those. Uh, what laws protect authors' rights in works that they produce? What are trade secrets and what laws offer protection for this form of intellectual property, such as customer lists, uh, the secrets to uh, famous Amos cookies, things of that nature? And what steps have been taken to protect intellectual property rights in the digital age? Computers have changed everything, uh, easier to pirate movies, songs, uh, all kinds of things, books, digital books, uh, everything of that nature. Uh, intellectual property, or sometimes known as IP, uh, is any property uh, that is a product of an individual's mind, uh, for example, books, software, movies, and music, because you have to think about the uh, or, or, origination point of these things, right? A book comes from someone thinking about certain things and tales that they've gone through. Uh, software comes up from someone's brainchild that says, hey, if we did this, uh, if I created optical character recognition for scanning, it would make things a lot better. Uh, movies uh, thought up a plot for a movie and music, uh, you know, you artistically uh, made a song. The U.S. Constitution protects uh, intellectual property in Article 1, Section 8. Uh, Congress shall, and it's, as it states, promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors, uh, authors uh, for, uh, for books that they write, inventors for patents uh, for uh, things that they create, uh, the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. Uh, ownership of intellectual property is strategically important in the global economy because we want people to be secure in innovating, creating new things so that it creates new jobs and new uh, methods of, of finance for families, for businesses, for countries and for states. Uh, trademarks and related property. Uh, trademark is a distinctive motto, mark or emblem uh, stamped or affixed to a product. Uh, so that it can be identified in the market. Uh, for instance, a can of Coke, right? You know, even if, uh, you know, if we were in the dark and you saw it in, in you know, fluorescent yellow and you saw, you knew, oh, hey, that's Coca-Cola symbol. You know that that's their, their mark. Uh, you know, it can be identified in the market easily, I, I, you know, identify little Debbie's, things of that. You know that, that it's that, that actual product. Uh, I want you to look up this case 5.1, Coca-Cola versus uh, Coke Company of, uh, of America and see how that turned out. Uh, the name Coke was so commonly used that Coke, K-O-K-E, uh, by competing company was a trademark infringement. And you have to think about that, um, like go get me a Coke when people are referring to a soda because that's they've done such a good job. Go make, a, go make me a Xerox, uh, but you're really supposed to say, go make me a, a copy. Uh, can you go get me... Uh, a Kleenex. No, well, it's not a Kleenex. It's a tissue. Kleenex is a, is an actual brand, uh, but they've done a good job of, of their marketing. Uh, trademarks and related property continue. So you have statutory protection for trademarks. Uh, the Langham Act of 1946 provides federal protection of manufacturers from losing business to rivals that use confuse, uh, confusingly similar brands and product, right? So if it's kind of close uh, to what you're doing, uh, then, then, you know, they're going to uh, proceed with the injunction uh, on that product because, uh, you know, you can see that, hey, this is my product A and your product B looks just like product A except for this one minor detail. Right. So it's confusingly similar and people are, are picking it up uh, just like, uh, you know, they don't sell um, uh, the same and they're not jump men, uh, and I forget what they're called, but my buddy used to have a lot of them, uh, you know, those uh, uh, Jordans, but they're knockoff Jordans that you can get at the swap meet, right? Uh, you know, it's, you, you don't see those being sold in Foot Locker uh, because, you know, they they would, you know, they would have a problem with that. They're allowed to sell them in the swap meets because nobody's going to come down there and check, but they're not allowed to sell them in Finish Line or Foot Action or, or uh, you know, Foot Locker and those places like that. Or East Bay. Uh, Trademark Dilution Act of 1995. It amended the uh, Lanham Act uh, to bring federal calls of action in federal court for trademark, trademark dilution, uh, even when the mark is unlikely to confuse. So even if it's unlikely to confuse, if it's really similar, right, it, there is still going to be a problem. Uh, similar marks may give rise to a dilution suit. 
uh, trademark registration, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, www.uspto.gov, in case you needed some inventors in the class, uh, it would be a great thing. Uh, gives notice uh, to third parties. Um, a mark can be registered if uh, in use, or a mark will be in use within six months, right? So if, let's just say Coke never existed and I created it, and then I was, you know, I was selling my cans of Coke, then, hey, yes, I, I can register. Uh, but uh, if I'm going to utilize that mark in six months, I can register as well. A trademark infringement is unintentional or intentional. So either way, whether you did it intentionally or you didn't do it intentionally, still the same thing, still the same result, a substantial copying of a mark. Because I could have thought of something and you could have thought of the same thing. It's plausible. It's possible. Uh, but even though I did it unintentionally, still the same, still the same result. Distinctiveness of the mark. Uh, so a strong mark, right? You know you can determine that from everything else. A uh, fanciful, arbitrary, uh, or suggestive trademarks are most distinctive marks normally not related to the product. And you say, well, you know, how does that make sense if they're normally not related? Well, let's think about it. Apple. How is an apple related to a computer? Now I know, you know, you can explain and say this is the theory of the company and everything like that. But if you look at an apple, right, you're not going to think a computer. But now... Because, you know, they've some, done such a good job. Now you say, hey, you know, you look at Apple and you think of a computer. Well, you can look back uh, way, way back in the day, maybe before some of you guys when Apple was, you know, Mac. And they said Mac and Macintosh, Macintosh, Apple, you connect certain things. But in essence, if you put an Apple and a computer right next to each other, they're not the same thing. A Xerox, uh, same thing. And then Starbucks, right? Uh, so they're normally not related to the product, but there's, it's a very, very strong brand. I, I, if I see Apple, I notice it anywhere. If I see Xerox, I notice it, notice it anywhere. And same thing with Starbucks. A uh, secondary meaning, descriptive geographical or personal names do not acquire protection, uh, until consumers actually associate them with a product. So in London, there is fog, right? But now you've created a brand of clothes called London Fall. And can they take that? Yeah, they can They can take it because everybody's associating that brand of clothing with the name London Fog. So although there's London Fog and we can't, you know, replace the fact that there's true fog in, in the land of London, but London Fog is, uh, is you know, is synonymous, you know, is, is always known uh, or now uh, to be associated with the clothing. Uh, generic terms, there's no protection. A uh, bicycle computer, right? You can't, you know, you can't protect against those type of terms. A uh, service mark. So just like with a product, a uh, service, they have marks too. Similar to trademark, but used for services includes TV and radio, uh, like rotor rooter, right? You see the rotor rooter dude uh, on the outside of the plumbing truck. You know, he is. You see the Jack Steffen guy, right? You have these service marks. So they're not for a product, but for actual service, right? Um, maybe a uh, you know, like supercuts, right? It's not a product. You can't touch it. It's not tangible. Uh, it's intangible. It's a service, right? You receive a haircut. Uh, certification mark is a uh, quality of goods, uh, UL tested, good housekeeping, uh, better business bureau, bureau stamp. You know, just certain certification marks that companies uh, have, whether it be a product or a service. A collective mark is used by members of a cooperative association or a union. So you could have your, you know, Union 95, you know, Super Duper Long Beach Port Union or something like that. And you see you have they they all have the same symbol, emblem or collective mark. A trade dress uh, protects image and appearance of a product uh, or store. Examples of fish shape, shape of a cracker, right? You say, well, why can't I make my crackers in the shape of a fish? Because that's what they've been doing or Starbucks uh, stores. And you guys may not think. That the design of a store is something that you can be sued over, but but it definitely is. Because I, I believe, I, I think it was um, uh, maybe uh, Chipotle that was suing maybe Pizza Studio. But Chipotle was suing some other company about the fact that they just, somebody went to Chipotle, looked at their layout, and then just said, hey, we're going to do our, our restaurant just like that. So that's something that, you know, that's trademark. It's like, hey, this is the way we design all our restaurants. You came in here, and now you want to do the same thing. Uh, counterfeit goods, uh, everybody loves those. Uh, stop counterfeiting and manufacture goods acts uh, criminalizes intentional trafficking in counterfeit goods. Well, we can all run down to the alley and get all kind of counterfeit goods. Um, they're probably good for one or two or possibly three wares until you know uh, the threads and start stuff start going coming apart. Uh, but you know it's something that's definitely prevalent. Uh, very hard to stop. Uh, 
Uh, but it is something that, um, you know, if someone's caught, it, yeah, they can definitely uh, prosecute. But, you know, if someone's caught, then somebody else is just going to come in that, that slot and do the same exact thing. Uh, I'm not saying that it's right, uh, but there's a there's a, definitely a market for that. Um, and, uh, and I think it pretty much will exist forever. Uh, you go somewhere like China and you see it's like really rampant in terms of, uh, of that and, and pirating, uh, especially electronics and, and information. Uh, trade names indicated all are part of a business name uh, that is protected. For example, Safeway, right? There's a Safeway to go home, right? But Safeway is a company, right? Um, cyber marks, you have domain name trademarks in cyberspace. So example, Nike.com, Conflicts, uh, you have like uh, um, I can. Uh, so I have anti-cyber squatting legislation, and that's what the assignment's about. Uh, you guys check out and, and learn what cyber squatting is if you don't know what it is. Um, occurs when a third party registers a domain name that is same or similar to another company or its own trade name, right? So I know um, of an instance like for uh, UFC, um, you know, like uh, MMA fighting, like they were trying to get www.ufc.com and... Um, and somebody had bought it, you know, so it's it's one of two things. Either you can pay the person because basically they buy it and they put it on the site and they say, I'll sell it to you for $50,000. Either you can buy it outright from them or you can litigate and say, hey, this is obviously, you know, something that's needed for our company. And the judge says, yeah, we agree. Uh, you know, so either way, you're probably going to, you know, use a lot of money. Uh, so a lot of people just to get it over the way out of the way, they just pay the cyber squatter and people that's that's their job. You can say it's ethical, you know, from back from chapter, I believe it's chapter two uh, or not. But um, but, you know, in some cases it's legal and legal to the extent that somebody has to prosecute. Uh, there's also uh, people called uh, trolls, which is not covered in, in here. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you troll something like you you patent something or you do some type of technology and you don't even plan on using it, but you just put it out there. Uh, and then somebody else comes along and they do it. And then you call that company and say, oh, nope, I have the trademarks. I have the patents. I have everything for this. And you need to pay me in order to go away. Uh, it's called uh, cyber trolling. Um, 1999, the anti uh, cyber squatting consumer protection act. So you can look that up as well. Uh, meta tags. So keywords and web, pa web pages used by internet search engines. So a lot of times people, you don't, some people don't put the thought in the fact that, um, SEO or search engine optimization, they have somebody at a company so that to make sure when you put in buy a cell phone that their company comes up first, right? So put in, you know, just go to Google, put in cell phone or purchase cell phone or put in purchase shoes or put in purchase, you know, car or something like that and see what the first thing that comes up. And there are a lot of companies that work very, very hard to get, you know, uh, their mark way up there, just like a company works very, very hard to get their uh, app or the application in the web store up to the top. When you put in, you know, ABC app, you want yours to pop up first. Uh, another case of Playboy Enterprises Inc. Uh, versus uh, Wellis in 2002. That's definitely an interesting one. Uh, dilution on the, on the online world. Uh, trademarks can be diluted on the web. So Hasbro versus uh, e IEG uh, over uh, Candyland. Uh, another very interesting case. Uh, licensing uh, agreement that permits use of a trademark, copyright, or patent in cyberspace, right? So if you license, whether it be in cyberspace or just, you know, regular physical brick and mortar, you allow somebody to use this, say, hey, you know, we don't want to put all our finances into building a, a new plant in Japan. Uh, here's a recipe and we, you guys go ahead and fill up, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the Coke in, in, in Japan. Now I've heard, I've heard, and I don't know it to be true because I don't remember uh, getting a bunch of Coca-Cola from Mexico, but I've heard that the Coca-Cola in Mexico is actually uh, sweeter uh, just because of the sugar cane that they use uh, that's indigenous to Mexico, uh, probably a little bit better than what's used here in the manufacturing plant. So it's a little bit better. So um, typically you say a Coke is a Coke, like a Coke in China, a Coke in the United States, Coke in Mexico is all the same, but I have heard that it's a little bit sweeter, maybe a little bit better. Uh, owner is a licensor or, and the user is a licensee. So the person, so I, I own Coke, I'm the licensor. If you're in Japan and now you're able to make Coke and sell it throughout Japan for, and you pay me a fee, you're the licensee. Uh, terms of the use, uh, terms of, of the use are delineated, uh, in the lease, in the license agreement, right? So there's a license agreement between you and myself, me, the licensor, and you, the licensee, that says that you're allowed to do this and pay me this certain amount of money. 
Uh, also closely aligned to that could be a franchise, uh, which we'll talk about in a latter chapter. Uh, check out case uh, 5.2, George versus uh, a restoration SA versus uh, Little Rest 12. Uh, owners of a mark would uh, suffer uh, irreparable harm and consumer confusion if the mark continued uh, by licensee. All right. So, you know, check out the case and see how, you know, things can get uh, twisted and a little construed. Uh, but, uh, you know, through the court system, uh, they're able to work it out. Uh, patent. So a government monopoly uh, that gives an inventor the exclusive right to make, use or sell an invention for 20 years. So for 20 whole years, right, they've got it. But you could make some mistakes and not get your patent out there. And then now you have a problem. I, I always tell the story. I have a friend and I'm telling you guys, you may not believe me. I'm, he made those little, uh, you know, flying, you know, airplanes that the remote control ones, the, the little helicopter ones, not the super ones that fly around for super hobby people, but just the little smaller ones. And he had all these designs and everything. And he took it on a flash drive. He showed it to me. He was doing all this work in his garage and everything. I think he may have showed it to one too many people and maybe about Two months later, I saw I saw the first one that I ever saw on TV, and he never ever mentioned it again. So, uh, you know, if you have something like that, I did keep it to yourself until you get your patent, you know, and license and everything in order. But you have 20 years after you do so, and uh, after 20 years, you should be rich and uh, rolling the money and not worry about if somebody's trying to uh, copy your product. So, what is patentable? Uh, item uh, must be a novel or not obvious, right? So you can't patent water or wood. Almost anything is patentable, excluding laws of nature, natural phenomena, and abstract ideas. Uh, case 5.3, you want to check out KSR International uh, versus Teleflex. A uh, patent for automobile pedal sensor was invalid, right? You know, don't, I think every car needs that uh, because it was so obvious and uh, combined uh, pre-existing inventions, right? A uh, patent infringement, uh, manufacture, use, or sale of another's product or design without their permission or license, right? So you don't get their permission, but you do it anyway. Uh, but sometimes, you know, companies, although, you, you know, they don't get the permission, they still come out on top because the people didn't file the appropriate paperwork. Uh, remedies for patent infringement. Uh, you have an injunction. We tell you uh, that you need to stop immediately. Damages for royalties. Uh, we need the, the money back that you made and plus some. And a reimbursement for attorney fees and costs because, hey, um, you know, we had to pay our attorneys to come uh, meet with you. Uh, copyright, so intangible property right automatically granted. So listen to this by federal statute to the author for life. So however you long plus 70 years, however you long, however you live, however long you live. Right. So you live to be, you know, from you made it at 30, you live to be 100, that's 70 years and then 70 more years. So that's 140 years before. Uh, before it's up. So, you know, it's a statute to the author for life plus 70 years. So what is protected expression? So work must be original and fixed in a durable medium. Uh, ideas are not protected, but the expression of an idea is. Uh, Section 102 exclusions, uh, a compilation of facts uh, is also protected. <clears throat> Copyright infringement, just like we talked about patent infringement, uh, form or expression is copied, uh, does not have to be in its entirety. Uh, penalties, damages, and criminal action are possible in such a scenario as well. But yeah, the fair use exception, uh, certain persons or organization can copy materials without penalty, uh, such as education, right? We're using it for a case study. They're not trying to make money off of it. Uh, news and research. So you see those things all the time on your you know, CNN news app and everything else uh, that you see. Uh, so much digital media. Uh, you know, there are not many uh, big newspaper companies, you know, being really, really successful as, the, as they used to be just because everybody's like, you know, why would I wait for a paper to come if I can you know, check my computer or even more so check my cell phone uh, for news. Uh, copyright protection uh, for software. That's, you know, obviously a big thing. Uh, people are, you know, copying software, uh, you know, by the, you know, by the millisecond these days. Uh, copyrights and digital information. So digital media can easily be copied anytime a copyright work is downloaded, right? So download to a computer. Um, anytime a copyright work is uh, downloaded or stored in uh, random uh, access memory uh, or hard drive uh, without permission, that means it's infringement. So if you took a movie and you put it on a hard drive and you put it on your laptop, it's infringement. Uh, if you downloaded it uh, from, you know, uh, from, you know, Cody or Torb or somewhere like that, it, it's infringement as well. A copyright act of 1976, uh, copyright or copy of a program into RAM is infringement. Uh, revision or resale of freelance authors' works can be infringement as well. 
uh, copyright MP3 and file sharing. So if you go to YouTube and get that link and you put in the MP3 or YouTube to MP3 converter, yes, uh, they, they have a copyright on that and that is technically illegal. Uh, Napster case, so you have a P2P or peer-to-peer -peer sharing distributed network. Uh, you look at a Metro Goldwyn uh, versus Meyer Studios Inc. versus a Grokster. A Supreme Court held that a software company that distributes software intended to be used to violate copyright laws can be uh, vicariously liable for user infringement, right? So if you're giving people the means and the abilities to do this because they didn't have it without you, then yeah, you're, you're held liable. Uh, what about the cloud network? Uh, what do you think about that part? Uh, you know, uh, that part's okay if you're, you're working with people and you're collaborating, but if you're in a scenario where you're taking things that you're streaming or whatever and you're passing along to someone else, then no, that's not okay. Uh, trade secrets are confidential, not filed with the government, like so the secret to uh, Granny's Cookies or Famous Amos or uh, the pet pretzel place in the mall. Uh, can be customer lists, formulas, uh, pricing, etc. Right, so I've got my customer list, and that's that's a trade secret. We're making sales and sales and sales because you know we've got the best customers. Uh, the theft of trade secrets is now a federal crime under the Economic Espionage Act of 1996. And cyberspace uh, employees can easily email information to competitors. So think about it. I'm about to leave. I got a better job from a competitor. I start emailing, you know, all my customer lists and everything else and all the other secrets uh, to a different company. And that's why a lot of times when companies are in direct competition, if you tell them that you're going to a direct competitor uh, and you say, I'm putting in my two weeks, they're going to tell you, tell you that no, today is your last day uh, because they know that it's a possibility that you may be taking things with you uh, that they don't want you to. Uh, international protection, you have the Berne Convention 1886, TRIPS Agreement 1994. Be sure that you're familiar with that for the quiz. Each member must include domestic laws protecting intellectual property of other nation members. Uh, the World Intellectual Property Organization, the WIPO of 1996, provides uh, for dispute resolution. Uh, the Madrid Protocol 2003, U.S. can uh, submit a single application to register its trademark with all 73 member nations, right? Because think about it, you have to submit trademark for every single nation right it seems very redundant a big waste of time uh so what you actually do is is simply uh submit it uh with the madrid pr protocol and uh you're good with all 73 nations and that's it for chapter five uh be sure that you uh have watched the lecture but if you're at this point i know that you did watch the lecture um watch the videos the supplemental videos are very good uh, and uh, study the chapter, chapter five, and then be sure to uh, take your quiz and do very well. Uh, so as always, I want you guys all to have a good day and a great week.